Would I be blocking your view if I sat here? Okay, well, we got these two. Get your daddy. Good morning to you. Good to see y'all today. God bless you. Let's go ahead and get up on our feet. People are still coming in. Good. Come on in the house. Good looking crowd here today. Pretty good. This is week number nine of summer. I do 18 hard, hot weeks in Florida, man. That's what I call it. Because we're a seasonal town. And I remember over the years, the summertime, and a lot of my friends are the business folks in town. And boy, it's tough. It's tough on them sometimes. Amen? And church is no different. But I'll tell you what, this is a debt-free ministry. We don't owe a dime to anybody. And uh, every bill is paid for the glory of God. Can we just thank you for that off the get-go? Come on, come on, come on, come on. I love that. Now, if, you, if you're not used to a seasonal town, for me to say that is a miraculous statement. Amen? It's crazy. So just we're just having a great time here at Fellowship. If you're here for the first time, I'm Pastor Gary. And uh, I tell people, you're going to love me. I'm just telling you. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But I hope you do. I hope you feel at home here today. This is just your church as much as my church. Listen, we're all at his feet. Amen say. We're all at his feet. Don't worship some man or woman around here. No, we worship Jesus Christ. Amen. There's no pecking order here. There's no pecking order here. None. None. So if you've walked in today, you matter as much as anybody else here. So you may as well just feel free today to worship the Lord and honor Him today. Amen. God bless you. Good looking crowd. Got that big terrace going on. Let's hit those lights right quick so folks can see it. The terrace is happening, guys. You can start to see it now, can't you? There's painting. There's wiring that needs to be done. There's some trim work that's going to be done. And I'm thankful I've got a friend that I love who's here today. He's going to do a lot of that trim work for us. going to make it pretty. And then the last thing that's going to happen is those seats are going to get bolted down. Amen? But there's probably still two months before that's going to happen. So let's just keep it going. Amen? We're doing fine, ain't we, say? Come on. Let's put our hands together. Thank God we live in America. That's where we live. Come on. Let's go. Boy, I love this song. It simply says, this is how I fight my battles. Come on. Here we go. Is it table? Your body and your blood you shed for me. 
This is how I fight my battle. There's a table you prepare for me. In the presence of my enemy. It's your body and your blood you shed for me. This is how I fight my battle.
Beautiful song, guys. Praise the Lord. This is how I fight my battles. Amen. A lot of people fight their battles by just blowing up or whining till the day is long and just thinking, poor, pitiful old me, I can't make it. Listen, you know, I'm good at saying it because I've done it. But I tell you what, the best way to fight your battles, you find something to be thankful for. You hear me or not, say. That's why we say, thank God we live in America. Nowhere on this earth like America. Come on, even a bum can make it here. Excuse my language. You hear me or not, say. We're blessed, blessed, man, blessed. Praise and thanksgiving. Do we have another song? Yeah. What is it? Uh, it's uh, the old hymn, Revive Us Again, but with a little... I like Revive Us Again. Let's do one more. Come on, you'll be fine. In case you're tired, you're like, you could sleep at the house. Come on. Let's go. Here we go. It's church on a Sunday morning. Amen. Come on, let's have some church. The old song. Page 485 in the old hymnal. It's the truth. 485, great hymns of the faith. Go find one. I'm telling you. I believe it. Let's go. Son of your love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. We praise you, o God, for your spirit of life, who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again.
old song, New Way. Praise the Lord. Well, welcome today. I'm on, did you drop this? What are you eating in church? You're not? Can you hold that? I'll stick it in my pocket. How about that? Picking on her, ain't I? How's your granddaughter doing? Tell her I said hello. Amen. She works down at the courthouse. A clerk. Amen. She's a sweetie. Yeah, she didn't rule against me. That was sweet of her. Amen. Praise the Lord. Gosh. I'm no different than you. You hear me or not? Say. Sometimes I speed. I got problems. Amen. That's my least of my problems right there. Amen. Come on. Welcome today. Let's, we're going to have a great day. A little bit I've got a message on. It's your move, life changing decisions, and today is positioning to succeed. Say that with me. Positioning to succeed. And we're not talking about some mumbo jumbo, just keep saying it till it happens. No. All from the Word, the Word of God today. Amen. And it's strong. That's a topic I love to talk about. So we're going to have a great day. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this morning. Lord, we don't want to have church without you here in our presence, here in our midst, Lord, today. So please be with us, Lord. Holy Spirit, the living God, you're welcome here. Lord, I pray that you'd touch people as only you can do, Lord. All of us going through different stuff, but you're God and we're not. And you can meet us right where we are. And Lord, that's what we want today. We want that today. Help us not to worry about somebody else today, what somebody else is doing, what is somebody else. Now, Lord, help us for about an hour to look at us a little bit and to look at you and see how we can see what you say about a matter today in our life. Help us, Lord, with our decision making. A lot of people depending on us, Lord. We want to do right, Lord. Help us, Lord, we pray. And Lord, I pray for folks today, if they died, they don't know they'd go to heaven. Lord, I pray they'd make the decision today to believe in the only begotten Son of God, Jesus. I pray, Lord, that they'll put their faith in you, not in some church or not in some preacher or, or in themselves, but in you, Lord. Today, that's my prayer, that, that not one will leave lost today. You don't want to lose any. We don't either, Lord. And so, Lord, I pray today that every one of us will humble ourselves and make sure that when it comes to our time, we know where we're going. We're going to be with you. We give you credit in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you today. Thank you. I'm doing announcements for a while. Miss Rachel is taking a little bit of a break and, uh, and, uh, in her life and just thinking about some stuff. And So anyway, I can handle this for a little bit. You hear me or not? Say, praise the Lord. So let's go with, the, uh, with some announcements. If you're here for the first time today, this is my favorite announcement we ever make. It's people here for the first time or people who've been in our midst who've made a decision to put their faith in Christ. It's in your worship guide. There's also something outside as well if you don't want to use this one. But would you let us know who you are and how you found us today? And to try to, try to get this from you because we're, we're sneaky. We want to give you a cool pair of sunglasses. Amen. Say, come on. So these are cool sunglasses and uh, you're going to like them. But we really want to know. A little bit about you. I'm not going to come visit you, but I am going to write you a letter of encouragement. I'm going to send you a couple of things in the mail. Not much, and uh, but if you put your faith in Christ recently, I will send you some things to help you grow in the Lord. And they're real simple, but they are basic steps that you need to take. So help me on that if you don't mind. I'd appreciate it. We have our youth ministries tonight. Uh, the Fuel is the high school ministry. Blast is the middle school ministry. And uh, both are doing well. Amen. Let's thank the Lord for that. The high school ministry. We watched it take off. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And when we started this a couple of years ago, these kids that started this, it was, it's going to always be something they can be proud of. Always something they can say, we started this ministry in Inglewood at the Fellowship Church. And they had 20 go to camp this summer. And uh, last week they had more high schoolers than they had middle schoolers. So that's, that's pretty exciting, man. Things are happening and we're excited about it. So keep this ministry in prayer. That's tonight at the four o'clock and five o'clock and there's food and all kinds of good things happening men's prayer breakfast is this saturday at the picnic tables right over here if it's raining if they're you know if it's wet and mess we usually will, we won't we won't cancel we'll go down here to that rotunda park there's a little uh overhang but we always try to meet right here at the picnic tables for a fresh cooked breakfast last one hour we pray together and then we go home nine o'clock amen or wherever we're going some guys get together 
They might hit a golf ball. Who knows what they're going to do, but come on, this coming Saturday. Also, next week is our first uh, Sunday of the month, so we'll have communion after both services next week. Communion. And uh, we love that. Right outside in front of the crosses. Amen. It's a beautiful time together. Also, we have free pastries, donuts, stuff that's bad for you. We got a few little things that are good for you that I don't eat. But, uh, no, they're good. Everything we have is good, I'm telling you. We don't have anything out there bad. So we want you to enjoy it. Amen. Did want to say a couple of things right quick. We've been blessed during the summertime to have an intern. I call him an intern. And that's that boy sitting on them drums right back there. His name is Mitch. Like Mitch. So we've survived this summer with two Mitches. Man, I'm telling you, that's rough. But uh, we're proud of you, son. You're going back to Liberty probably in a couple of weeks or so. Going back to college up to Lynchburg and uh, be at Liberty University. But we're proud of you. We appreciate you. And I want you to do something today. And that is this. He's been with us all summer, didn't ask for nothing. But that boy's been a blessing. And so Mitch is gonna, my son Mitch is gonna be out there as well, because this Mitch behind that glass is shy. That's okay. But we want to bless that young man with some gifts of appreciation. If you think you might want to do that today, that young man's going back to school. He don't have a lot. He didn't have a lot at all. And I think that's the right thing to do. He served us faithfully all summer long. Amen? It, let's praise the Lord for him. Come on, isn't that good? Right there for you. You matter. We're proud of you. Mitch, you got anything to say about that rascal right there? Now, you're going to be out there if somebody wants to give a little something. You're going to make sure it gets to him. Absolutely, you ain't keep, yeah. You're just, not keeping just, it, right? Yeah, just come, come find me and I'll... Uh, but you're not keeping it. What? No, you're not keeping it. I don't need anything. So. Oh, good. He don't yeah, need don't that, need but anything. he's I'm good. good. Amen. But no, but yeah, he's been he a does. blessing, hasn't he, to you? Yeah, absolutely, and I know college can be real, real tough, especially when you ain't got a lot. I actually went to Liberty. I didn't have much when I went there, and it's, it's cold. You got to walk a long ways to get to the, the food and all that stuff, so it's, uh, I don't know, it's nice. It would definitely help him out, and I'll be happy to uh, give it to him for you. So. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen, Mr. Joe. Yeah, thank the Lord again. Come on. <clears throat> Got a brand new song today and Mr. Joel Herring and it's great to have uh, his family here with us as well. And uh, his daddy is my friend. We're gonna go eat again soon. And, uh, but uh, Joel, you got a song. It's a, it's a new song to our church, but you wanna say something about it. Come on. Yeah, um, I've known this song for quite a few years and this is a song that Pastor Gary would say is uh, maybe a little unusual. Um, but I think the message behind this song kind of paints the picture of us the church as the bride of Christ and in the Bible it says that God is a jealous God he's jealous for his bride uh, he wants all of our hearts he's not gonna compete with the materialistic things that sometimes we let stand between us and him um, we sing another song how he loves and it says that God is jealous for us his love is like a hurricane well his love is also relenting you know he wants uh, wants all of our heart. He's not going to relent until he has all of us. And, um, you know, the song that we sing as well, Reckless Love, says that there's not a shadow that he won't light up and a mountain that he won't climb up coming after us. So I hope this song speaks to you this morning about uh, the love of God and how much he loves and cares for us. For the 
There is love that is as strong as death, jealousy demanding as the grave. In many waters, can I quench this love? You won't relent until you have it all, my heart is.
Oh, right there, man. What a great song. A lot of that right out of the Bible, by the way. Great stuff from the scriptures. Good stuff. Different. 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 Amen. Loved it, though. You're right, Joel. If you hadn't said it, I would have went, that's unusual. I liked it, though, didn't you? I did. I liked it. Thank you. And y'all did a great job on it. That's why we liked it, man. You're not dead to park. Anyway, thank you guys. Thank you for being here again. Thank you for giving to the Lord's work. We appreciate your giving. We're continuing to get that terrace done for the glory of God. And uh, as of right now, uh, things are on track. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to come up a little short because they've done a few extra things that we needed done. But uh, we're not going to talk about that yet because we don't know it yet. Amen. Say, so, we'll worry about that when we get there. But today's offering goes to meet the needs of our ministry. We appreciate all that you do. Uh, we've said it for years. We're going to keep saying it as long as I'm breathing and I'm here. And that is, if you can't give cheerfully, we ask you to keep it. We want everything we do to give honor and glory to the Lord. Amen. So anything I have, any money I have, any talent I have, any gift I have, is from the Lord. And so when we give back today, this is because we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe God so loved us, he gave his son for us so that we could have everlasting life. We believe every good and perfect gift, if you know it, say it with me, comes down from the who? Father of lights in whom is no what? Variableness, neither what? Shadow of what? Turning. And that's the story of my life. He has chased me. He has stayed by me. Even when I've screwed up, he never threw me out with the trash. How many could raise a hand and say, I'm glad he didn't throw me out with the trash. I'm glad he didn't throw me out with the trash. So that's how we give here. Amen. Yes or no? And it'll be fine. But when you don't have debt, when you don't have debt, our mortgage, if we had debt on this building, just on three million, let's just call it three, four million, not the eight or ten. Call it three, four million. It'd be about thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars a month. Can, uh, can you imagine that? Say, and most of that would be interest. You can run a ministry on a whole lot less when you don't have that crap hanging around your neck. Excuse my language. Amen. Say. So we, we try to do a good job. Ain't perfect, but we try. So when you give today, know that you're giving to a good thing. Amen. Say. And God's good to us. So thank you for giving in just a bit. One last song this morning. Oh, come to the altar. Oh, I love this. Oh, come to the altar. Wow. Calm everything down a little bit. Man, this is beautiful. Thank you, guys. Let's join in. Oh, come to the altar. He's waiting for you. Amen. Yeah. 
Praise the Lord this morning. Thank you guys for leading us today. And thank you for giving to the Lord's work. And we appreciate you. Appreciate what you do. Richard, come on and lead us in prayer. Come on, buddy. Thank you. It's a friend of mine. Been coming here about a little over a year now. And like anybody else, you come in here and there's no pecking order. You can serve the Lord if you want to. Amen. Say. No matter where you came from. But I've got a question for you. Where did you find that shirt, that Lemon Bay shirt? I found this. We found it. Pastor saw it first on the side of the road in North Carolina. And it was just laying there on the grass. And he said, we're going to pull over. And there it was. I'm wearing it. Boom! That's how you do it. In case you don't know how to do it. We did wash it, though, didn't we? Yes, yes. I liked it because it was Lemon Bay colors. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hey, coach, practice in the morning full-time now. Starts at 6 a.m. for the boys till about 9. Do you have food or anything for them, or what's going on? You don't think they keep it down? Amen. Amen. All right, buddy. Keep, keep our prayers for our coach and coaches, and I help a little bit, but keep us in prayer, the team. We like to win. We want to win. Is that what we want to do? We want to win. Come on. want to win. Amen. Come on. Thank you for giving. Let's pray together. Appreciate you. Father, we come to you, Lord. Mm. We're just so humble, Lord, that mm. uh, we can come to you, Lord. And uh, mm. we're just so grateful, Father, that everything that you do for us, Lord, is so amazing. Mm. And, Lord, we just trust you, Lord. We, we look to you, Lord, for our help, Lord. Mm. And we need your help, God. We, we need do. you so much, Lord. Lord. We pray, Lord, for the congregation here, Lord, that you just settle them, Lord, and just... Help them, Father, and just meet their needs, Lord. Mm. And Jesus, you can do that, Lord. Absolutely. You're there for them, Amen. Lord. And we just pray your blessings, Lord. Touch we pray it. for the offering, Lord, mm. that you would just uh, bless everyone, Lord, that can give, Lord. Mm. Give, give cheerfully, Lord, yes, as Lord. Pastor said, Lord. Mm. And Lord, we just, we just thank you, Lord. We're so grateful, Lord. We're thankful for this church, Lord, and, and all the people here, Lord. Amen. These people that bless them. The, lo him. the loving people here, Lord, there's so many of them, Lord, and we pray your blessings upon them, Lord. Him, Lord. 
We pray for salvation today, Lord. We pray that people will come to know you, Lord Jesus, Amen. and receive you, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you for this wonderful time, Lord. Mm. Be with our pastor, Lord, yep. and help him, give him strength, Lord, Amen. encouragement, yes, Lord. And, and everything, Lord. We just give you praise in All Jesus' right. name. Jesus. Amen. Amen, buddy boy. Amen. Praise the Lord, man. Love you back, buddy. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Appreciate you. probably know this. It is well with my soul. Come on. It is well. It is well with my soul. It is well. With my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Let's thank the Lord for everybody that served us. We appreciate them. Amen. Couldn't have church without them. Wouldn't want to. Thank you for serving the Lord. Amen. Let's go to the Word this morning. Excited about the series. It's your move. And uh, just been looking at different scriptures on how to make decisions, how it can help us. We looked at the prodigal son. And uh, what some, boy, some decisions in that story, that's for sure. And then we, last week, looked at uh, a lot about decisions, but a couple of points was, uh, uh, what were they? One was can't please your amnesia. Remember that one? Can't please your amnesia. We need to look in that rearview mirror sometimes and realize God's been good to us. Say that with me. God's been good to us. Sometimes it's not a bad thing. I'm not saying live your life looking back, you get run over. But looking in that mirror, when Satan comes against you, when battles you're facing, when struggles you have, man, I'm going to look in that mirror because God's been good to me. God's been good to me. He's going he's gonna to be good to me still. Amen. He's going to help my tail. That's what I believe. Amen. So now let's go for another one. It's your move. Life-changing decisions. See what we can find today. Positioning yourself to succeed. Get in the position to succeed. You just can't be all over the place. Well, I'm going to be a success. Not if you're all over the place, you ain't. And your head's over here and you doing this over here it's craziness I'm gonna succeed you are gonna make a mess and you're not gonna get where you think you're going so let's talk about it today and uh, I like to do things where it makes good common sense so
The bottom line today is how to have good judgment. How to have good judgment. Am I making the right decisions? Can I make the right decisions? I mean, maybe you've made a mess of your life and you've been doing that for years. Is that the way you want to finish? Well, yeah, but you don't understand. I'm just this way. Well, you need help. Say, I need help. Come on. Can we say it louder? Come on. I need help. I need help. And God's in the helping business. And he's got people like us out there that want to help. We can help people. And uh, we need to help ourselves. But his word is powerful. So let's look at it, Rog. Here we go, baby. Let's roll tide. What does God want me to do is the question we ask. So often we overlook the obvious when it comes to making good decisions. So often it's right there as plain as a nose is on our face. And we overlook it. We need to realize that God gave us something amazing when he gave us our what? We're not a dog. I like dogs. I don't like my dog, but I like dogs in general. But anyway, every time I go to North Carolina, I, I think about going by that pound and getting me another dog. But I keep, I've called Kim several times. Honey, there's a dog. Can we get him and turn ours in? And she's like, no, no, no. But anyway, but God gave us a brain, guys. You're fearfully and wonderfully made, you and me. The problem is so often we don't use it. Amen. Say, how many would just go ahead and say, man, there have been times I did not use the brain I had. Let me say some hands. I just didn't do it. That's crazy, man. So if you're struggling today, you're facing hard situations today, and you're like, listen, you're surrounded by people who have been there. A lot of times we think we're going through stuff nobody else has gone through. And that's just another attack of the enemy. There's other people all around us in the body of Christ that have gone through things, and you can make it, man. Let's keep looking. Push me, buddy. Here we go. I'm, I'm raring to go. 1 Corinthians 2.16, For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? Say that last part with me. But we have the mind of Christ. I am different. I am saved. I've been set apart. We saw it last week in the message. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. I have the word of the living God. I am, am indwelled by the Holy Spirit of God. Who can know the mind and the ways of the Lord? But you and I, we have the mind of Christ. I can have good judgment. Just because mama screwed it up, daddy screwed it up, even if I screwed it up, there is a way that I can walk that's going to be a blessing in my life. And I can do this now. Y'all hear me or not? We can do this thing. God wants you and me to use our heads when making decisions. He wants us to be smart. If it's God's will for us to have, say that with me at the top. It's God's will for us to have what? Let's do it one more time in case this week you're going to act like a fool. Come on, let's say it one more time. It's God's will for us to have what? Is this right? No! Is this right? Yeah! Is this stupid? Yeah! Is this stupid? No! You, we, he wants us to use our brain. He wants to make good decisions. And sometimes we just don't. God wants you and me to have some godly common sense. When I study the scriptures, I encourage you strongly. When common sense makes sense, seek no other sense. There's a whole part of the church out here today that's looking for, yeah, but you see this verse and it, it's got like seven numbers and it, it speaks about America and all this kooky stuff. It's crazy. We try to look at the Bible and try to, you know, see this Bible verse right here said Donald Trump was going to get elected president. We are crazy. Amen. I know the Lord sets up kings and rulers. Into, I understand that. But guys, when we study the scriptures, how about we just come back down to earth a little bit and have some common sense? Y'all with me or not? You want to make good decisions? Come on back down here to common sense land. Amen. Yes or no? Are y'all okay? So God wants us to have common sense. But beautiful thing is this. See, I think common sense is awesome all the time. But man, if you can have some godly common sense, now you're talking. Amen. Say, I want some godly common sense. And that's my, my hope for you here. Now, there's some do nots when it comes to positioning yourself for success. Are y'all alive? I mean, you're like you're going to sleep. You're not asleep, are you? You just got up. Come on. Some do nots. If you want to position yourself for success, here we go. Let's roll. I am emotional. 
I am emotional. I am emotional. How many know that Clark's emotional? I'm emotional. I like my emotions, but they are, can be crazy sometimes. But I don't want to be dead or in a hammer. I like, I like energy and I like emotions, but sometimes it can get me in trouble. Realize you can't always trust your feelings. Some do nots. Do not always trust. I just feel, I just feel. You a fool. And other people can see it. Other people can see how foolish you're being. Yeah, but I, I feel. <sighs> You got to know that. You got to know that when you're trying to have good judgment. How many of you felt it and it was flat out wrong? Let me see some hands. You, come on, guys. You felt something before and it just, it just caused you a lot of trouble. But I felt it. Because you're crazy. There is a way that seems right unto a man. Say that part with me. But the what? In thereof are the ways of what? <laughs> this message is packed full of scripture today. Not me. I grew up in a hell hole. I grew up not knowing right from wrong. About anything I've learned came from the Bible. How to live life, how to be successful, how to make good decisions. And when I don't make them, it's on me. It ain't on him. Amen. He's given me what I need. So you can't trust your feelings, those first impressions. And there's another, it, it's mentioned again in Proverbs 16, 25 for hard-headed people. Anytime you see verses mentioned the same way over and over again, it means, hello, down there. You're crazy. There's a way that seems right unto a man, but the ways there are the ends up of death. How about this one? He that is first in his own call seems what? It seems just or right, but then his neighbor comes and searches him. What does that mean? You think you've got this great idea? And somebody else comes to you and says, hello, 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 not a good idea. Amen. And starts to point things out in your life, that's good. Every way of a man is right in whose eyes? Yeah, but I feel it, I believe it. Some of the dumbest ideas I've ever seen. Have you seen American Idol and these people get up there and sing? They're heartbroken when they're voted out. She should have never been here in the first place. Horrible. I'm a singer because I feel like I can sing. But we, we don't feel it. Amen. Say. Or some ideas, sometimes the people are pushing ideas. I watch Shark Tank. How many watch Shark Tank? I like Shark Tank. I learn stuff. But some of those things are trying, they're pushing. They have this idea. They ask them, uh, how, how many of you sold? Uh, like 10. <laughs> and you want me to invest a hundred million, I mean a million dollars in your, your, your idea, and you ain't sold but 10. And they're going like, uh-uh, get out of here. First impressions, guys. The Lord is the one that can ponder your heart if you allow him to, if you'll start talking to him. He wants you to have godly common sense. Some do nots. So I'm emotional. Number two, say that with me. I'm what? I'm unique. I'm not you. You're not me. I know you're glad. Realize every person's different. We cannot always make decisions based on what somebody else has done. You hear me or not? Somebody else did it. I can do it. No. You don't know what somebody else is doing, what they've gone through. You don't know all the intricacies. The Bible says, you possess my reins. You've covered me in my mother's womb. Push it. Say it with me, that verse. I will praise you. Say it with me. For I am what? Fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works that my soul knows right well. So know that you're unique when making decisions. Just because somebody else did it doesn't mean you can do it. Just because somebody else couldn't do it doesn't mean you can't do it. Amen. Say so, I'm emotional, I'm unique. How about that one? Say that one with me, some do not. Here we go, I'm what? I'm fallible. I can screw it up. Realize good judgment will never contradict God's word, the Bible. Say that out loud with me. Realize good judgment will never contradict God's word, the Bible. Now, I like that because that tells me right there in my decision-making, 
If I'm making a decision that's contradicting God's word, I am wrong. Isn't that nice? Yes or no? See, I like that. I want that. I want there, there, there's a way that seems right to me, God. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. You don't understand my situation I'm in. Does it contradict God's word? Yes. Then don't do it. Did you hear me or not say? That's simple, isn't it? Is that simple or what? He's picking on me. Uh, you're pathetic. He's not picking on you, man. He wants your very best. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By doing what? Taking heed according to his what? Let's just slam them with verses. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not what? Sin against God. Open thou my eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of your what? Law or the word of God. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled where? In heaven. He's not going to give you a pass. I'm not saying bad decisions haven't appeared to work out for people. But I'm going to tell you one day, you, God's going to judge that situation. And what we see might look like it's cool, but it's not cool with him. And you might could have had a whole different life because of your decision making. Thy word's a lamp unto my feet. It's a what unto my path. It's a what? When you can't see. Thank you, Lord. That's God's word, man. The entrance of your word gives what? Light. It gives understanding unto the what? Yeah, I'm not that bright. God says, good, you're a perfect candidate for me to make something special out of. Amen. Thy word is very what? It's what? Therefore your servant what? Loves it. God's word is right. It's pure. I want to know what that is. I want to be in line with that. I want to make those kind of decisions. I've gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant. Seek thy servant. For I do not forget your what? Commands. How many have never heard me do the Ten Commandments? You've never heard me get on stage and act like an absolute lunatic. Can I see some hands? There's a few of you in the house. Okay, I might do those again because they're incredible. They are incredible. When you get the Ten Commandments down inside of you, all of a sudden you've got ammunition to fight Satan. Did you hear me? They're more than something on a plaque. I'm telling you, you get them inside your heart, buddy. They can change your life. This is great stuff. Because the foolishness of God, look at this verse. Look at the craziness of this verse. The foolishness of God is wiser than men. The weakness of God is stronger than men. See, God ain't foolish and God ain't weak. The scriptures are just trying to say how stupid we are. When we don't read his word, trust his word, believe his word, go along with his word, we're just not that bright. And God says, this is what I have for you. Keep looking. So, we've seen some do not. So, positioning to succeed, how to have good judgments. The Bible says, as it is written, eyes not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him. That makes me want to love him. Yes or no? He has incredible things for me. I can't even imagine if I get in step with God's will... What things are going to happen in my life? I'm from Rockingham, 109 River Road, Rockingham. Other people might not come here and think this is a big deal, but if you're from Rockingham, if I brought anybody from Rockingham, North Carolina, and walked them on this property, every one of them's mouths would drop. Because you just don't do stuff in Rockingham hardly. You know what I'm saying? And then you look at where I came from. I'm not saying I did it. What I'm saying is as I've lined up with God's will, God has done great things in my life. Y'all hear me or not say, and this church is one of them. As far as I'm concerned, this church is the, is, is the greatest thing. And the church isn't a building, guys. It's you folks. It's our town. I went somewhere, no matter where I go, people say, like yesterday, I'm meeting an absolute stranger, and I had a lemon bay shirt on, coach. I wear them everywhere I go, because this is my town. That's my school. Amen. And I had that shirt on, and I, she looked at me, and I shook her hand, and I said, do you know me? It was just weird, but I just sh shook her hand because she looked like she knew me. And she said, absolutely. I've been to weddings you've done. I've been to funerals you've done. I knew her son. 
I knew her grandson very well. What I'm saying is God has been good to me in my life. Amen, say, in this town. He's helped me do things. He'll help you do things. Are you hearing me or not? This ain't a message about bragging. I'm just trying to say God has great things planned for your life. For me, I couldn't see it as a boy in Rockingham, as a drunk mom and daddy. I couldn't see the thing. Now, there's been pain in my life, sure. But here's the thing. He's been with me in that pain. Amen. It grew me better, grew me stronger. And then other stuff has happened along the way. And now, where am I at in life? I, I'm a father of five now. I had two, went through trouble, now I got three more. I'm father of five. Isn't that crazy how God just does stuff? Amen. Say so, my mother-in-law and father-in-law, they had passed away years ago. I've got me a new mother-in-law, had a father-in-law for a while. Now he said, God just, he can help you with your life no matter how crazy it starts to turn. Got it? Yes or no? I know I'm boring you. Listen, it's written, I has not seen nor, heard, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him. He has something special for me. But God hath revealed them unto us by his what? His what? His spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yea, that eat things of God. If you want to live by your emotions, if you want to follow what other people do, if you want to make decisions knowing that you're fallible and keep him out of your life, you're never going to see these incredible things that God has for your life. Are you hearing me or not? One of my favorite verses, it is my favorite verse. For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. That's crazy. You mean, God, if I love you, all things are going to work out for me in my life? Absolutely. To them who are the called according to his purpose. And he, he tells me, don't you worry about what somebody else thinks. Don't you worry about what somebody else might say about your life, about the pain. My mother was murdered. How can that be good? God can take crap and turn it out for good in your life. That's the beauty of God. You don't need good judgment. Are you kidding me? Struggling in a marriage like I was killed me, hurt me so bad. Oh, man, I wanted to take my own life. But it was God that came to my rescue that said to me, I love you. You matter to me, boy. Amen. I want to be able to hear his voice. Don't you say amen or me. Woo! Keep looking. If you love God, then you can rest assured that God wants you to make good decisions. Say that with me. If you love God, then you can rest assured that God wants you to what? Well, I love God. Well, then you rest assured he wants you to make good decisions. That's bottom line. He wants you to have good judgment. He's going to assist you through his what? Through his what? And that's not, that's not spooky, guys. We were made in the image of God. We have emotions. We have will. We have... We can get hurt. We can get excited. We can think things through because we're made in the image of God and God can communicate to us. That's not spooky. It's spooky if you don't believe in God. But man, when I started to put my faith in God, my whole world opened up. I saw everything different. Amen? God the Holy Spirit will come alongside of you. He will help you. And this ain't spooky talk. Now it's spooky to flop like a chicken and act like a crazy person. Anybody can do that. Anybody can run around the building. Can you balance your checkbook? Can you drive a nail? Amen. Can you love your children? Can you forgive somebody that's hurt you? See, this Holy Spirit stuff, a lot, a lot of hype out there. The Holy Spirit, the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit, is always, usually the word is truth near, God, near the Holy Spirit in the Scriptures. God wants you to walk in truth, believe truth, be a person of truth, not crazy. That's God's plan for your life. You can make a lot of money though being a kook on TV. Some do know, some, some do nots, now some do know. Say that with me. I do know that I am a child of God. Know that. Do you know that you're a child of God? I'm not talking about are you perfect. If you think it's your works that get you to heaven, you're probably not a Christian. It's the grace of Jesus Christ. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. Do you believe in him and him alone and nothing else? Period. Do you know that you're a child of God? How do you know if you love God? The Bible says if you, 
He will work all things together for good. He will help you in your life with good judgment, help you and in, in, walk with you in your life. Well, how do I know that I love the Lord? I'm a child of God, but how do I know if I love God? If you're going to have good judgment, you need to love God. Commandment number one, if you know it, is a what? Remember me doing them years ago? It's a what? It looks like a what? Sword pointed where? In heaven. Have no other gods before you. Is God number one in your life? I'm not saying you don't love your wife and your children, but when you love your wife and you love your children, you're saying, boy, thank you, Lord, for my wife and my children. Amen. Say. See how you love him above them? <laughs> the Bible says, how do you know you love me? Here's what the Word says. Jesus said it. If you love me, keep my what? It's funny how we pray about situations that are foolish. They're contrary to God's Word. We try to get him to work it out and squeeze it in the box. He's not going to break his Word. He wrote his Word down so that men down through the ages could criticize him could try to find fault with it. And guess what I checked out just recently? His word still stands. Did you hear me yes or no? Let's thank him for his word. Come on. His word still stands. <laughs> Who does that? Who writes everything down? Uses men to do it and says, I'll stand by it. God does. He's not going to give you a pass. Keep his commandments. Here's another one. How do you know you love God? You love one another. Yes or no? If you're hateful to people, you don't care about people, don't think you're a person of good judgment. But I'm a good businessman. Yeah, but you're pretty a failure at life. The child of God is to love one another. Amen. Say, a new commandment I've given to you that you love one another as I've loved you, so you love one another. So, I know I'm a child of God, and I know I love the Lord. Number two, I, say that with me. I do know, I do know that God wants me to what? He wants me to make good decisions, guys. You got to lose that I'm picked on mentality. Eeyore. Okay. Did you know a lot of people go through life making decisions based on their picked on mentality? That's how they get them a job. I really need a job. That's how they get people to give them money. I'm broke. God. I just don't like that. Did you hear me or not? My same old sad story over and over and over. And I share stories out of my life, not because I'm sad, but because they're real, and I'm trying to show you how I've made it. Amen. Don't feel sorry for me. But the struggles in my life. I'm not picked on. I do have an adversary, the devil, who goes about as a roaring lion seeking to do what? To devour me. So do you. But lose that attitude. For what man knows the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him, even so the things of God knows no man but the spirit of God. Now we've received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. There's no reason we should sit in a, in a pit and just whining. Did y'all hear me or not? It's picked on mentality. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall what? He shall what? Teach you all things. He'll bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. So you just got to believe this. I do know that God wants me to make good decisions. You got to lose the I'm pitiful mentality. It's sort of the same thing as the picked on. I just can't make it. I can't do it. <sighs> I've been there. I've felt that. I've felt like so down in that hole I can't dig my way out. You're not going to get out with that attitude. Yes or no, say. Just go ahead and throw more dirt on me. No matter what it is, I don't want that attitude. I, I got to lose that. I got to know that. Which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teach, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual the world will look at your life as a wreck and a mess and you can't make it. But the natural, because the natural man doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. When bad things happen, I can still make it. Say, I can still make it. Absolutely. 
I know Coach back there, Southwell, when, when he's down and when this team is down. We believe we can come back, don't we, Coach? God help a team that doesn't believe they can come back. Amen. That's the problem with the Vikings. We get a lead. We beat people to death in the first half. Then we come out, get behind. Oh, my gosh, we lost. You still got a half a game left. You still got a lot of life left. Say that with me, that great verse loud. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I wear this on my arm, Jesus strong. I can make it. I can do it. You hear me say, not in my own strength, because I'm pitiful in me alone. But me and Jesus, we whoop this sucker. Amen, say. I've told many people just playing with them. I, go, I walk up to big guys sometimes, big ones. I'm talking huge. And I walk up to them just sort of funny, and I'll go up to them and say, me and Jesus will beat the snot out of you. <laughs> I know it is stupid. I've done it, ain't I, Raji? Raji's been with me in the restaurant when I've done it, Rob. Like, please don't go over there and tell him you can whoop his butt. You'll be fine, Rod. Just sit over there. Because <laughs> I can outrun Rod, and all you got to do is outrun one person. <laughs> Amen, buddy. Here we go. Come on. Making decisions. So, some do nots, some do knows, and now some do accepts. We're talking about making good decisions. Do accept, say it with me, that God knows your what? Gifts, talents, and he knows your what? He knows this. It doesn't make good sense to try to be somebody you're not. But that's what we do. You know, that's the way church used to be. We'd dress you up, give you a certain Bible, cut your hair a certain length, dress you in certain clothes. The color of choice for men would either be a black or a blue suit with a white shirt and a red tie. Did you know you just can't do that? We are people of variety. And we need to know that we're unique, guys. And God knows me. He knows my gifts. He knows my talents. He knows my... And He loves me anyway. Amen. I just need to explore that. And that's where I'm at in my life right now. I just want you to know that. That's where I'm at in my life right now. I'm having some health problems. I've still got some. But it was challenging me. And I just, I started spending a little more time back home in Carolina. I started going back up there and hanging out with my brothers and sisters a little bit, eating me some old greasy hamburgers with slaw on them and some I know that's not what the doctor ordered, but I liked it. And you know, it sort of calmed me down a little bit. And I'm at the place in my life right now, to be honest with you guys, where I can just get up here and talk. I'm not threatened if you don't like me. Because I like me. Yeah, yeah, I know you love me. That's the funny thing. That's the funny thing. It's all a bunch of bull. It's all a bunch of bull that we got to measure up. We got to perform like a monkey on Sunday, like I have to do that. I've been doing this for years, but I'm having more fun now than I've ever had in my life. I'm just talking, taking the scriptures. It's the God on his truth because I've seen it work in my life, and I, he's no respecter of persons. If he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you. And I'm just very comfortable. I'm me. You talk funny. You look funny. Good. Spell my name right. Gary with two R's. Amen. So know that. Accept that. Accept that. This ain't a cop out. It's to be thankful that I am who I am. I am where I came from. I, I, I am. I did go through things in my life, but you've been with me, Lord, and you will never leave me. I mean, you can, you can do a crazy bunch of stuff. It makes a lot of sense to believe that God wants you to be who he created you to be and to do what he's equipped you to do it just makes a lot of sense guys responsibility to evaluate your abilities do accept it's my responsibility to accept my abilities to evaluate them, my interests my weakness so I can make good what absolutely we could talk all day about that but we gotta go do accept say this one with me please loudly 
do accept advice, information, and godly counsel from people who are in tune with God. It's okay. I had a guy the other day come see me. I don't know if he's here in the room or not. But it's okay. it was all good. He came to my office, was there first thing in the morning, standing outside under the stoop because it was raining. He's a businessman. He had some business questions. He thought of me. He came in. He said, would you be able to talk with me? It's a little strange. I said, it's nothing strange because you matter, man. Come on in. He sat down with me. He presented his business situation to me. And he was getting a little off track in his business. He felt it. He believed it. Maybe that wasn't the right direction. But he wanted some counsel. And without even telling me, we're lining up on the right side. Amen. Say, not this side. And it helped him so much. You could just see the weight sort of lifted off of his shoulders. Y'all hear me or not? Just getting some good godly counsel. And you don't need to come to the preacher all the time. We got so much wisdom in this room. How many, how many out there, you know some of the mess I've gone through, how many of you would probably say, I've been a little bit of a help to the preacher? Let me see your hand if you think you've been a little bit of help to the preacher. You've been a little bit of a help to the preacher here. Many of you have helped me. I get wisdom from you. I need understanding sometimes. Y'all hear me or not? The way of a fool's right in his own eyes, but he that hearkens unto counsel is what? Yeah. So you got to think about this. you got to accept it, man. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the who. If somebody is ungodly, if somebody does not have character, why am I going to listen to them? Yes or no, say. I want to know from these fools. No. I'm not going to listen. Blessed is the man that doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Why am I going to go try to get information from somebody who scorns God? Amen. Plenty of people on this planet without me having to go there. But his delight's in the law of the Lord. That's where I want to get my advice. I'd like to get advice from somebody that knows God's word, that believes God's word is right. Yes or no? That's what the Bible says. Keep looking. Got to go. If you want to make good decisions, have good judgment, then tap into the wisdom of folks that are what? How many would say, I tapped into the folks of somebody wise in my life and it helped me. It changed everything. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. Tremendous. Do accept correction. You want to make good decisions? Then accept corrections, correction if you're going to seek godly counsel. Don't really, I mean, I'm happy for you to come to me, but if you're going to come to me and keep living your life a stupid way, But I still want you to come to me because I want a shot at it. Amen? I like sparring. Absolutely. But you've got to accept correction if you're going to seek godly counsel. It does zero good for you to ask for advice if your mind's already what? That's what we want from the church. We want a rubber stamp from the pastor. I've had many people come to me over the years, want me to do things, want me to rubber stamp their life. Had a guy cheating on his wife one time, came in, tried to tell me it was the will of God. It was all I could do not to throw him through the window. You hear me or not? And I could have done it easy. Don't come to me with that. <laughs> Amen. Say, we're not here to rubber stamp bad decisions. We're here to try to help you in your life. Amen. I'm going to have a heart attack if I keep doing that mess. Don't be hard-headed, man. Don't be hard-headed. I'm hard-headed. How many hard-heads we got out there? How many of you only learned after God whooped your butt? Let me see some hands. Only way I learned, he whooped my butt. Roger's got both hands up. I don't know how he runs buttons, raises his hands the whole service. Here we go. Come on. Are we done, Rog? Positioning to succeed. How to have good judgments. what we've been talking about today. Yes, maybe, no. Look at it. What's it going to be? It's your move. Make good decisions. Amen. Let's praise the Lord. Come on. Amen. We did it. Yeah. Boom. A lot of stuff today. Amen. A lot of stuff. Come on. Let's get on your feet.
Young lady, it was your first time. How'd you do? All right, I know you enjoyed the worship. Did you get anything out of the message? If you didn't, don't tell me. <laughs> Amen. I hope you learned a little bit today. Encouraged you a little bit. Amen. Joel's sister's over here. How'd you do today? Did you about go to sleep on me? If it is, we know you were up late. And won't me. Good to see you, doll, baby. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for an awesome day. Thank you for a time in your word today. Lord, thank you when it comes to making decisions. Your word is just full of verses. It's full of stuff. You want us to make good decisions. You love us. You, you, you say that you want to come and, and give us life, abundant, abundant life. But Lord, we have to make these decisions. You're not just going to zap us and all of a sudden, there, there it goes. We're going to have to seek. We're going to have to do like the song said. You, your love is relentless. You don't want to talk to us like we're not in the room. You don't want us to talk to you like, or live our life like you're not in the room. You want to be a part of our life. God, help us today. Help me. Lord, help me personally in my life. Help me personally as I continue to grow in a relationship of love with my wife, Kim. Help me, Lord. I need your help. I need your help. I need to do better. I can do better. Help me with my life, Lord. Me personally, my relationship with my children. I love them, but I, I can do better at that. I know I can. You have better things for me, Lord. Help us, Lord. I pray folks that are struggling right now with big decisions. I pray for folks that are struggling with decisions that are... It's going to be, it's going to be tough, Lord, if they don't get it just right. Help them, Lord. Lord, I pray for folks here today that if they die, they don't know they'd go to heaven. Lord, I pray they'll make the right decision to put their faith and trust in you, Jesus, and to do it today because you told us to in your word. Today's the day of salvation. We don't know we have a tomorrow. Cause it to be so, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you have your heads bowed with me one last moment? I, I really hate to let us go without giving us the chance to put our faith in Christ, to believe in Jesus. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. See the wisdom of that verse? One day our sin is going to lead us to death, but our faith in Jesus can give us eternal life. I don't want you to die and go to a place called hell. I want you to believe in Jesus and go to heaven. Have you put your faith in him? Can I lead you in that prayer today where you would do that, where you would do that today? This last Sunday in July 2019 on a hot Sunday morning in Florida. Let's pray together. Do business with God. He saved me. Take my advice today, my strong counsel. If he saved me and my drunk mama, he'll save you. We didn't get saved by being a church member. We got saved by the grace of Almighty God and the forgiveness of sins because of what he did on that cross. He'll save you today. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, talk to him. I know I've sinned. I am a sinner. That's who I am. And I know I'm going to die one day. And I do not want to go to hell. And I'm making a choice right now. I'm making a very good decision. I'm having good judgment. I say no to the devil and no to hell. And I say yes to you, Jesus. Best I know how. Best I know how. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you're God's only son. I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose from the dead. I don't understand it all. But in my heart, I believe. And in my heart, I believe you love me. I'm not a piece of garbage to you. I matter to you. Thank you, Lord. Come into my life and live. I put my faith in you, not some church or some preacher, not myself. In Jesus' name, amen. And with heads bowed still, how many would raise a hand? I do it every week, and I'm going to keep doing it.
How many would say, Pastor Gary, I know for sure, man, I put my faith in Christ today. I did that. I'm not ashamed to raise my hand and tell you either. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you guys. Proud of you. Amen. Father, bless us as we go. Help us to learn something today. And uh, Lord, I pray it'll, it'll, whatever I say, it'll, by your Spirit's power, make good sense to people's ears. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's thank the Lord again. Come on for being in church. Amen. Had a good day. Good day. Pray for me. I'm going to do this again.